So Bitcoin and Ethereum had a baby and out came wrapped BTC, or you may better know it as WBTC, an integral part of the Ethereum decentralized finance ecosystem. It can be used in dApps, smart contracts, and much more. So if you're curious to learn more about this attempt to bring Bitcoin into the Ethereum world, then all you have to do is sit back, relax, and just keep on watching. Hello WBTC, what is this all about? It stands for Wrapped Bitcoin, and that's BTC, not Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin SV. It's an ERC-20 token that's one-to-one -to -one backed by real Bitcoin. And the purpose of this is to improve interoperability between the Bitcoin and Ethereum networks. It's an ERC-20 token, which means that BTC can now be used across the Ethereum ecosystem in things such as dApps, decentralized exchanges, ICOs, and so forth. It started in early 2019, initially launched by BitGo, Kyber, Ren, which is formerly Republic Protocol. Some stats about WBTC. Launched January 31st, 2019, there's currently 569 in circulation on Ethereum, roughly speaking at least. And at 10k per Bitcoin, I know Bitcoin just dropped a little bit recently, but at that amount, the total value in circulation is 5.7 million. It has 8 decimal points, which is the same as Bitcoin's decimals, whereas ERC-20 can have up to 18 decimals total. And right now it's spread across a thousand plus addresses, currently 35 partners involved, and that includes custodians, merchants, exchanges, DAO members, wallets, and protocols. Finally, the code is open source and they do show transparency of custody. So what problems is this trying to solve? Well, first of all, it's more liquidity to decentralized exchanges and also other DeFi apps. Because if you think about it, most liquidity are on centralized exchanges like our Coinbase's or Binance's. A big reason why is because they offer Bitcoin or BTC pairs with altcoins. And so theoretically, WBTC could increase liquidity because now you can offer effectively BTC pairs with altcoins on decentralized exchanges by trading them with the ERC-20 token WBTC. Any smart contract or dApp on Ethereum can now include Bitcoin transactions as well. Furthermore, you can get faster clearing of Bitcoin transactions by utilizing the Ethereum network. Remember, it does have shorter block confirmation times. This means that you can send Bitcoin faster by using Ethereum wallets, exchanges, and going between those. Companies can also reduce the amounts of nodes they have to manage by only managing Ethereum ones now and getting Bitcoin transactions out of it as well. The big challenge though is to connect the BTC and WBTC worlds because both are on separate and independent networks. So who's involved in this really interesting project? Well, first of all, they have a DAO and the institutions within the DAO hold keys to a multi-signature wallet that can do stuff like make smart contract changes and add and remove members as well. Who are the custodians? Initially, it's just BitGo, the most famous one in the space, but more in the future. Merchants who initiate the process of burning and minting these WBTC tokens in exchange for Bitcoin. Also dApps, decentralized finance apps, decentralized exchanges, and centralized exchanges. And some of them include Ethphoenix, Kyber, IDEX, ZeroX, Radar Relay, MakerDAO, DYDX. Finally, users who are the ones that swap Bitcoin for WBTC and transfer WBTC. So here's just a snapshot of all the community members, all the big corporations and projects collaborating on this wrapped Bitcoin initiative. So what are the main functions of WBTC? Well, there are four. Receiving WBTC, minting them, burning them, and also receiving Bitcoin. And this is all described in the white paper. They have an order book at the record of all minting and burning, public, online, and where it happened in terms of the merchant. And this is just how the process goes. And the snapshots on the right-hand side are from their information, Wrap Bitcoin. I'm going to leave a link down below in the description about where you can find more information about them. Basically, number one is the merchant initiates a transaction to authorize the custodian to mint X number of WBTC to the merchant's address on the Ethereum chain. The merchant then sends the custodian's X amount of BTC. Then the custodian waits for six confirmations of the BTC transaction, which is normal to do, and then creates a transaction to mint X number of new WBTC tokens on the Ethereum chain. Now, how do users receive these tokens? First, they request the wrapped tokens from a merchant. Then the merchant does KYC AML procedures and get ID information from the user. And then they perform an atomic swap or use a trusted exchange for the merchant to receive Bitcoin for the merchant and the user receives WBTC in return. How does burning work? Well, the merchant creates a burn transaction to burn X amounts of WBTC tokens. Custodian waits for 25 block confirmations of the ETH transaction. And then after that, they release the X number of Bitcoins to the merchant's Bitcoin address. Then the custodian makes an Ethereum transaction 
marking the burn request as completed. Finally, the last step is receiving Bitcoin for WBTC. First, you request the redemption of tokens from a merchant. Then the merchant does KYC AML once again and gets ID info from the user. And then the user and merchant perform an atomic swap or once again use a trusted exchange where the user this time receives Bitcoin and the merchant receives WBTC. So basically the flip side of the earlier process. Now, how's trust and transparency involved? And this is so important for wrapped Bitcoin because it's one-to-one -one with real Bitcoin. Remember, it has to be this, has to have trust and transparency that that's always the case. So they do use a centralized model, but instead of one institution, they rely on a collaboration of institutions with different roles, kind of like we touched on earlier. So this approach is a little bit more decentralized. There are audits by custodians and also quarterly publication of assets with signatures from the Bitcoin addresses that hold those assets to prove that. On the flip side, there's also a proof of reserve of one-to-one -one ERC-20 tokens on the Ethereum blockchain to the reserve on the Bitcoin blockchain held by a custodian. And the processes of minting and burning are also verifiable. Finally, the custodians cannot mint or burn on their own. Only merchants can initiate this process. So here's a screenshot of the proof of assets that they show publicly and also the token contract on the Ethereum also shows the amount and you can double check it yourself that they match up one-to-one. -one. So how does governance work for this project? Well, there's a multi-sig wallet that controls the DAO. Signatures are required from multiple members to add and remove DAO members. Members are all merchants or custodians by default, and other institutions can participate without those roles though. So what are the costs involved for using wrapped Bitcoin or WBTC? Well, the, for the transfer, it's free apart from the gas fee, of course, for the Ethereum network. And so you may be wondering, how are the participants incentivized then if it's free? Well, the custodians, they get paid by the merchants for minting or burning tokens. And the merchant fees are paid by the user for exchanging WBTC tokens for BTC with the merchant and so forth. So are there some issues with this approach? Well, first scalability, because initially WBTC will be running on the Ethereum mainnet. So if fees or congestions ever get to be too much, then it may be migrated to a dedicated sidechain with a proof of authority or POA consensus model. Also trust. It's, of course, a practical and convenient solution for utilizing Bitcoin on the Ethereum ecosystem, but Bitcoin's more robust security, privacy, and decentralization would be lost with this approach. What about privacy? Requesting or returning WPTC to users always involves KYC, so not really private at all. So what are some final thoughts from us? First of all, this is a great way to further improve and experiment with DeFi by including Bitcoin in the fold. Other dApps can now accept and process transactions in Bitcoin, you can theoretically improve the complementary nature of Ethereum and Bitcoin and improve certain Bitcoin use cases by using it on the Ethereum network. Users should, of course, be aware of the trade-offs of using WPTC on the Ethereum network instead of just using Bitcoin natively. Though we do think it's a reasonable compromise between centralization and decentralization when it comes to these tokenized assets. It's definitely a revolutionary enrichment of the Ethereum ecosystem, opening the door for more innovation. All right, thanks all for watching. Have you heard of Rap BTC before? If not, let us know down in the comments below what you think. Also, you can support us by liking this video, subscribing if you haven't already, and be sure to watch more of our content I'm leaving up above. Definitely check it out. Let me know what you think. This is Kevin, and I'll catch you guys next time.